me welcome Mr. Kev Carey Albus. So after the movie, 
he was very moved because it's his favorite. It's his favorite book and it's his favorite movie and it's his favorite screenplay. And after the movie, I said, uh, Bill, what do you think? He goes, I, I can't believe it. I mean, they, they, they just love the movie. I can't believe it. How much they love it. I said, Bill, you wrote a classic. And, you know, that's how I feel about this film. I feel so blessed to be part of a film that is that started out as a little modest movie and now has become all of this, you know? So that's why I wrote this book. So it's a, it's a book from the heart, like the movie is a, a movie from the heart. And uh, I think you'll, you'll all enjoy it. So uh, like I said, please, please uh, go out and buy it. I, I, it would mean a lot to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Thank you. also been involved with a lot of period pieces yeah. and you've also recently hit the horror circuit with yes. Saw. Yes. <laughs> Thank Just you. Tell us in a little bit. How did we go from the Dread Pirate Roberts and Romantic Leads to Saw? Well I wanted to uh, I wanted to broaden my fan base. <laughs> It's very rare that I meet a, a Saw and Princess Bride fan, it's true, but they're out there. And God bless you, God bless you, thank you. Um, you know, I, 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 I met James Wan, the director, who's now directing Fast and Furious. He's a wonderful guy, very sweet guy. And uh, he's such an artist, he's from, he's from Melbourne, and he studied at the Melbourne Film School. And uh, when I met him, he had a portfolio of drawings under his arm. And he opened up a portfolio at lunch, and he started playing to see all these drawings, and they were all watercolors and beautiful ink and watercolor paintings of the sets. There was a, a painting of the, of the bathroom, and then there was a painting of the pig mass thing, which was kind of terrifying. And then, then I saw this blueprint of this trap. I think it's like I think he called it the reverse bear trap. For you guys who know the movie, and it was a really yeah, it was pretty. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it was very graphic and very detailed, and it had you know screws and nuts and bolts and things like that. And I said, "My gosh, James, that looks that looks so detailed." And he goes, "Yeah, it's operational." <laughs> and he had spent so much time working on the detail of this film that he'd actually made he contacted an engineer <laughs> and made this thing actually operational. And uh, so I was so impressed by his his obvious talent and his very warm charm and his passion for the film. And so that's why I did it, yeah. We shot it in like 18 days, I think. Wow. Yeah. For something that technical, that's quite yeah, fast. Yeah, it was very fast. And, uh, and then it became a huge runaway success, so I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed. Cool. Well, I think... Thank you. Oh, yes. Don't let me step on love. That's fine. Um, we're going to kick it out to the audience, and I think we'll just go back to Cutie over here and let her start. Yes. Hi. Hey. <laughs> it's been it's finally on. <laughs> <laughs> Do you perhaps have six fingers on your right hand? <laughs> I'm the man in black, not the guy who killed in the Montoya. I know, but remember that part? Yeah, I sure do. <laughs> you know what part I remember the best? Is the moment when I just hugged you. I thought so too. Yes. <laughs> you are sweet. What's your favorite X Men character? <laughs> yeah, you're smart. <laughs> And obviously you've seen a lot of movies. <laughs> okay, my favorite X-Men character. Gosh, they're all so good. Uh, I mean, I'd have to say Wolverine, I know. And, uh, he's, he's really cool. And Hugh Jackman's a great guy. So, Mine yeah. right now is Nightcrawler. And Nightcrawler, okay. Wow, you're, you're quite advanced. How old are you? Nine. Nine? Very cool. Very cool. Can I have another hug? <laughs> They are free. <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't want to. Later. Later.
almost didn't make that. Yes. Given the chance, would you have to be a part of it, even as like the old man or like the king or something? <laughs> <laughs> he, he was based really on my just happy. trying to jump up on the stage and nearly hang the deck. <laughs> yes, I'm a very old man. <laughs> he was really cool. You're very sweet. <laughs> I do believe the musical is happening. I had dinner with uh, William Goldman a couple of nights ago. And uh, it looks like the Broadway musical is finally happening. Yes. Yes. After a long, long time, it's finally coming to fruition. So yeah, I'm very excited about it. I, I, I don't know if I'll, I, I mean, I don't think I'm going to be a part of it, but I will certainly be there opening night. But thank you. Thank you for your, your very kind comment. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have any way of preparing for each of these roles that's kind of unique to you? Anything that's like a little quirk that helps you get in the mindset of each character? Um, I just research everything. I, I love research. You know, I, I started, this is how old I am actually, I started in the business before there was the internet. I know, I mean, you guys, it's crazy, isn't it? It's hard to believe there was a time before the internet, but there was. And so, um, you know, I used to go to the libraries a lot, wherever I was. So, for instance, when I was making Glory, um, I went to Boston and I found Captain Shaw's letters in a, in a museum library there and I read them all. And that was so the research is actually half the fun for me. And what I do usually is I just get as many books or now, you know, going online and finding out as much information as I can if it's a historical piece or, or a character that I'm interested in that's, that has some details that I want to look up. And, study and I just download it all in my brain and then just bring that to work and so apply it. For Despero. For Despero. Despero. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, there weren't that many art thieves available for me to talk to. <laughs> um, but I did go online and look up, you know, what, how, how that whole business of, of, of art theft and uh, how the FBI work and how these guys have gotten away with it. And, how some does. I think there's even a, a Vermeer that's still missing from Boston or something like that. So there's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. The research is half the fun. To me, it's like, it, it's a continued ed education for me. You know, I mean, this is how blessed my life is. I get to play race car drivers, so I get, get to learn how to race Daytona. You know, uh, I play an astronaut, so I, I get taught by real astronauts how to work a lunar module. I mean, it's like a dream come true for me. My life is really, Incredibly blessed, you know. Well, thank you. Very thank much. you. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Nervous. <laughs> Don't be. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Seen Spinal Tap. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And like most of you, I was blown away by how incredibly funny that movie is, even to this day. It's, it's, it's brilliant. Um, so when I heard that Rob wanted to come and meet me, I was shooting a film in Berlin. This is all in the book, by the way, so you should definitely get the book because it's, it's better written than what I'm trying to tell you right now. But, um, so when, I, when, when he came to Berlin to meet me and talked to me about the part, I was, uh, I was completely in awe of the man already. I'd already seen, I grew up with All in the Family, watching that show as a kid. And, uh, but I'd seen Spinal Tap and I just thought, my gosh, the idea of this man who was working with one of my favorite screenwriters, Bill Goldman, getting together to make this film of this book that I'd read when I was 13, 
I just thought it was, a, you know, again, a dream come true. And I thought, there's no chance I'm going to get this role because Rob decided to ask me to read. You know, he flew all the way to Berlin, but then he asked me to read for it. And I, I, I'm terrible at reading for parts. Um, and I thought, that's it. I started to read the scene. I think I read the scene where uh, Wesley talks about how the Dread Pirate Roberts uh, kidnapped him and, you know, uh, that whole bit, yeah. And uh, he stopped me halfway through and he goes, yeah, that's great. Okay, that's fine. And I go, oh, and my heart sank. I'm like, oh, God, that's it. I've lost the heart. Forget it. So he goes, you know, we're going to talk to your agent and we'll see how it goes and maybe if we can make a deal and we'll, we'll let you know. And I thought, you know, when you hear a director say, we'll let you know, it usually means you never hear from him again. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, like a week later, I got the call from my agent that they wanted me to do the picture. So I was, I was over the moon. I couldn't believe it. So, um, it, you know, it gave me the, the career I had and the incredible life that I lead today. Uh, Mel Brooks, I grew up with Mel Brooks. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mel Brooks. Uh, As you can tell, I'm a great fan of comedy. And uh, so I'd seen all of Mel Brooks's movies. I mean, I'd seen everything. Twelve Chairs. Yes, anyone seen Twelve Chairs? You guys seen Twelve Chairs? Don DeLuise. I asked Mel for Don DeLuise to be in the movie based on Twelve Chairs. I love Don DeLuise so much, God bless him. And so I, I, I made that one demand. I said, you got to put Don DeLuise in the movie. And uh, but I'd seen Blazing Saddles, I'd seen Frankenstein, yeah, absolutely. I mean, just classic comedy. So uh, he didn't make me read, thank goodness. <laughs> But uh, we had a lot of fun doing it, and, and you know, uh, I helped cast Dave Chappelle, who obviously is you know, yeah, you know, just amazing. He came in red, and we were just blown away by this guy. We just thought, this man's a huge talent, and uh, my gosh, we were lucky to have him. Um, yeah, it was great fun. So again, yeah, I was very blessed. Uh, and yeah, thank you for your question. Thank you for doing it. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. First of all, I cannot believe I'm talking to you right now. Oh my god, okay, just a moment. <laughs> Shaking, oh my god, okay. Um, so I love you, Princess Bride, first of all, of course. But you've done so many different roles. You've done, you know, the funny, but then you've also done some really dark roles as well. Yeah, yeah. As an actor, what are you the most proud of doing? Like, is it things like Princess Bride that's the comedy, or are they some of the darker roles? I did more I'm acting. very proud of most of my work, actually. You know, uh, some don't always turn out the way you hope, uh, but for the most part, I, I, like I said, I've had a very blessed career. I've got to work with some amazing directors. I've got to work with, you know, Francis Ford Coppola. I mean, this guy was a, like a hero of me growing up. I've seen, obviously, The Godfather, Politics Now, Conversation, uh, Rain People, everything. I mean, I just was blown away by this man. So, um, I remember when I went to meet him uh, on the Sony lot to talk about the part, I said to him, for you, Mr. Coppola, I work for a ham sandwich. And I was quoting Eric von Stroheim. And I was, I, was, I thought he wouldn't get it. He went, oh, Eric von Stroheim. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we bonded very quickly over, over that. And he's, you know, I've, I've had an incredible career, really. I mean, I've, every role has been in education, like I mentioned earlier, you know. Um, I mean, who'd have guessed this little kid from, from London, you know? would have this life, this blessed life that I have. I got to race Daytona. How crazy is that? <laughs> I mean, come on. It's nuts. I had Dale Earnhardt teach me how to drive. I mean, it, I'm t you know, it's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank yeah. you. Hello. Hi. How are you? Very well, thank you. What's your name? That's really good. Okay. Um, oh, hi. I already know who you are, though. Um, can you say as you wish? Again? Yeah. Sure. Okay. As you wish. I talk about him a lot in the book, um, so again, I'm going to plug the book. <laughs> um, 
Andre really was a gentle giant. You know, I mean, he was seven foot four, 450 pounds, and he was like the eighth wonder of the world. You know, whenever he walked into a room, he had to bow his head low to get in through the door frame. And so, you know, he had a pretty rough life, really, even though he was a very successful wrestler and a big star in the, in the wrestling circuit. You know, it was very hard for him because he couldn't sit down at a normal table and no chairs really fit him. You know, he had to get two chairs put together. Beds were often uncomfortable. Toilets were obviously an issue. <laughs> um, you know, but he was just the sweetest guy. And he, um, I'll never forget, uh, he's a real, he was a real foodie. You know, he grew up in France. He grew up in a little village in France. and. Uh, he told me this great story about how he couldn't fit on the school bus because when he was about 12 years old, he was already six foot three or something like that. And uh, so it was a problem for him because he couldn't walk to school and he couldn't fit on the bus. And he said, uh, oh yeah, boss. He called everybody boss. I love that about him too. The idea of a seven foot five giant calling you boss. <laughs> um, he said, yeah, boss. So the, this guy come one day and he, made friend with my father and he drove me to school. I said, somebody drove you to school every day? He goes, yeah, boss. He's the only guy who had a convertible in the village. <laughs> and I said, really? Who, who wants that? He goes, oh, it's just some guy, right? I come, his name was Samuel Beckett. <laughs> and it was the playwright, Samuel Beckett, who drove him to school every day. So if you Google him, if you don't know who he is, he's an incredible playwright. And, uh, but Andre, he was the sweetest. He, he didn't care for the British food. By the way, Britain is not known for its culinary genius. <laughs> and he took one look at the catering on our set, and he went, no, no, boss, no. <laughs> and on his day off, he uh, drove his truck, uh, a specially modified you know, truck that he had, and uh, he went over to France on the ferry, and he came back. And he filled the truck with crates of pate and foie gras and cheese and lots of wine, which the producers confiscated because they had the wine up. Well, he drank most of it, I think. <laughs> but he, he, you know, he was already the, the crew loved him already. But after that, they, you know, he could do no wrong. You know, people, the crew wandering around going more pate, more foie gras. So yeah, he was he was just a, a sweetheart, and I miss him to this day. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to start by uh, thanking you. It's uh, partially your fault why uh, I'm uh, a total sword geek uh, oh, cool. <laughs> and involved in the Western martial arts community. Oh, right on. Uh, I wanted to uh, ask you, uh, your fight with uh, Mandy is uh, largely considered to be one of the greatest sword fights in si uh, cinema history uh, by the Western martial arts community. I wanted to ask you about your, uh, uh, your training for that. Uh, you know, uh, how was all that? Yes. Okay, so that's an interesting story also in the book. <laughs> Do you see how I, I kind of snuck that in there? <laughs> um, subtle. That's right. Thank you. Subtle. Um, I broke my toe making the film. Yeah. Uh, Andre. Andre couldn't walk around too much because he had a really bad back. And, um, because in wrestling, I think they took it very seriously when people would just bash the back of his head with real metal chairs and for real, you know? And so the poor guy was in a lot of pain. Um, so the, and we shot a lot of sequences up in the hills in, in Derbyshire, right? And so he couldn't walk up a hill like that. And so he wouldn't make it on time for the, for the scene, you know? So they got him an, a, a, an ATV, an all-terrain vehicle. I don't know how they found one in England. They weren't popular back then. Um, but they found him, and he loved it. He was like, oh, boss, I have one of these at home. These are great, boss, great. <laughs> and he was, he was moving around, he was having fun, he was going up and down hills. And he, you know, see a, a, you know, a 450 pound guy going up and down the hills, he would, you take notice of that. You know? <laughs> he comes zooming by me, he goes, boss, hey, check it out. <laughs> and he, one day he pulled up to me, he goes, boss. I go, what? You want to try it, don't you? <laughs> I go, one? He goes, one, two, boys. <laughs> I go, Andre, I can't, you know, I don't know how to write one of these. 
it's easy boss, it's like a motorbike, come on, you know, you want to. <laughs> so the first day I'm like, I politely declare my God. Okay, boss. Took off again. Zoom. Right. <laughs> Next day, same thing. Pulled up. <laughs> hey, boss. Hi, Andre. You know you won. <laughs> so, like a twit, I went, oh, all right, fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on, boss, come on. He gets off this thing, you know, and immediately it suddenly comes up in the air. <laughs> I sit on it, and his handler says to me, he's, British guy goes, oh, I was very easy you now. He's a clutch, she's a bright, it's just like my bike, Bob's your uncle. So I get on this thing, switch it on, I start to go up the hill, and the crew are watching me, the muse, they're like, what, what's he doing? <laughs> and I try to switch gears, and I went over a rock. At the very moment that I switched gears, and my toe got caught between the rock and the clutch, and it bent backwards. And it was a quick break, I just felt it break. I went, like that. I just felt it. Oh, great. 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 This is, we're two weeks into filming and I broke my toe. And we haven't even got to the sword fighting scene yet. And I'm nervous as heck because I'm thinking, that's it, they're going to fire me for sure, right? I mean, here I am. It's like if you, if you get an accident on a, on, a, on a film set, if you get an accident while you're shooting, it's like work is comp, like any, anywhere else where you work, right? And the insurance covers it. And take a break from shooting, when they take a break from work, and the insurance covers it, and so on, right? But if you break it doing something stupid, like riding around on Andre the Giant's all-terrain vehicle, <laughs> then you're just a dumbass. <laughs> and nobody really cares about insurance at all, or anything like that. You're just a dumbass. <laughs> and so, I was terrified, and I kept saying, that the set nurse came over, and the set medic, she, she, she uh, takes off my boot and she goes, Best time I find it's clean break. Broke it. I go, why? You gotta fix it. I mean, I, I gotta go back to work. She goes, well, you can't really fix it. You can't put a cast on it or nothing. I go, well, what can you do? What can you do? I gotta go back to work. What can we do? She goes, I could, I could probably make out a little splint. <laughs> so do it, do it, do it. So she pulls out, um, I don't know, some tongue depressors or something. And she quickly makes a splint for me. And I'm telling everyone, don't tell Rob, it's all right, it's cool, don't worry, I'm fine, I'm fine. I get to my feet and I can barely walk. I'm like, oh my gosh. It was so painful. Um, so I get in the van, we ride up to the, the hill where I'm shooting a scene with Rob, and I think it's a scene where um, I'm running down into the fire swamp, and I say to her, your big fiance is too late, uh, we've already made it, right? And if you look at the scene, you can see me hopping. I'm just hopping. And Rob comes up to me and goes, how you doing? <laughs> I go, fine, fine, fine. Why? How are you? He goes, I'm fine. You sure you're okay? I'm like, psh, he's okay. It's perfect. He goes, when were you going to tell me? <laughs> and I went, oh, man, I am so sorry, bro. I feel like such a twit. He goes, don't worry about it, man. We'll be fine. Can you walk? I go, well, yeah, I can walk. He goes, can you run? I go, yeah, I lied to him. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> he goes, what about the sword fight? I go, oh, we'll, 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 we'll be fine. <laughs> and God bless him, you know, I went straight to the doctor, to the hospital, after we shot. And I was still in my, uh, my uh, man in black outfit because they wanted to rush me right there. And I remember the doctor looked at me and went, you're pretty clumsy for Zorro, aren't you? <laughs> So that whole sword fight sequence, I wasn't just uh, not left-handed, I was not operating with a fully functioning left toe. So we were kind of proud of it. So, so given that, that I was uh, a little bit uh, handicapped, um, um, thank you for, for, for mentioning how much you liked that. I really appreciate it. We the whole thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Eleanor. Hello, Eleanor. I'm good, how are you? Good. I'm a little nervous and excited. Oh, that's okay. You know, my, my crush. Oh, that's right. Uh, and yes, my husband is okay.
that was really sweet. Thank you. Made my day. Uh, so I was going to ask is out of all the roles aside from Princess Bride, what has been your favorite? Oh my gosh. Um, I've had so many. Like I mentioned earlier, I've had so many great, great movies. Uh, Days of Thunder was a lot of fun. Uh, want to hear Days of Thunder story? Yes. Okay. So, um, I thought I was a kind of hot, flash, young guy back then. Thank you. Um, so I rented, we shot in Daytona during spring break. So I rented a, uh, I didn't just rent any car. I rented a Corvette Stingray. Because I thought it was so cool. Job. And, uh, yeah, the quote is, that he is a job. I don't know what I was thinking, you know, driving a Corvette to work every day. I mean, really, what was I thinking? But um, I arrived at Daytona one day, and uh, Randy Quaid, who played the, the guy who owned the, the, the racing team in the movie, he never got to race in the film, and uh, he felt left out. So he saw me pull up one morning, he goes, move over. He literally pushes me into the passenger seat, gets behind the wheel, and floors it onto the track, onto the Daytona track, which, by the way, you're not allowed to drive regular cars on the Daytona track. They're, like, very serious about that. And uh, I'm like going, Randy, what are you doing? What are you doing? He's like, come on, I got this, I got this. And he floors it, floors it onto the, onto the track. And I'll never forget, uh, Tom Cruise was in the middle of handing a check to the owner of uh, Daytona's. So one of those fake giant checks and getting the pictures taken. I'll never forget, we passed this guy doing about 80 miles an hour, and I saw the owner of the track going, what the hell? <laughs> and within seconds, there were Daytona police. They had their own, you know, police that run, work the track there. I hear, boom, like that, behind. I look behind, there's two cops chasing us. I go, Randy. Randy, pull over. He goes, what? Why? I go, it's cops. It's cops. He goes, they, don't, they haven't seen us. <laughs> we're on an oval. <laughs> and that's what I said to him. I said, Randy, we're on an oval. <laughs> they've got their speaker, you know, they've got the, the walkie talkie. They're like, pull over the car right now. Pull over. We are serious. We're not kidding. Pull over. <laughs> but Randy, pull over. He goes, they will never catch us. <laughs> We're in a stingray, man! <laughs> and sure enough, they went right past us and, and stopped us. And they jump out of the car and they're, they're nervous, they're adrenaline. So they're like, step out of the car, show us your hands! And they've got their guns drawn and everything. Randy gets out, he goes, I'm an actor, don't shoot me! <laughs> so that was the crazy day with Randy on the track. <laughs> that was the day of the crazy Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm very pleased and scared to be here. <laughs> um, so my question, my sister and I, we love watching um, Princess Bride, we love Men in Tights, but we're really huge fans of Psych, and so we oh, And you were wonderful on Thank the you. show. And Thank so you. I was wondering, as well as my sister, um, how it was like being on the set with Dulé Hill oh, okay. and James Roday being as crazy as they it's are? Crazy. First time I heard Dulé do his little scream, <laughs> he goes, oh. I lost it. I couldn't, I thought he was just joking. I didn't, you know, I hadn't seen, I'd seen a, a few episodes, but I somehow missed that scream until the day it, it was suddenly performed for me. <laughs> and uh, they were just hilarious, these guys. All day. I think they should compile like an episode of just outtakes, right? Shouldn't they? Yeah. If you guys blog USA and, and uh, on the site network, I'm sure they'll they'll accommodate you if they get enough enough uh, emails. But yeah, I think they should. I mean, we had so much fun making it. It was just crazy. It was just a laugh fest all day. I mean, Rodé, he's nuts. He's totally nuts. Um, and I just love them. I love them dearly. I had such a good time making it. And, uh, and I miss them dearly. It was a great show. I had, I had a blast. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Hi. 
So, quick question. Is it Lauren? Lauren. Lauren. Hi. Between silly comedies and mainstream comedies like Liar Liar yes. and then dramas and horror, is there a genre that you really love? That I, I love more than any other genre? Yeah, like, because you've done them all. And I would think slapstick and or horror would be super fun. I haven't done sci-fi. So I guess that might be interesting to do that. Right? <laughs> Star Wars, there you go. I can play, I play Wookiee. You want to hear my Wookiee? But do you have a favorite genre that you've done? I love them all. I love all genres. I do. I'm, I'm not partial to one over another. Perhaps, well, that's probably not true. If you look at the body of my work, I. I do tend to pick historical pieces. I love his history. I love, uh, um, it was my favorite subject at school. So, uh, thank you, yeah, yeah. Um, so, history, historical pieces tend to fascinate me. I love looking back and learning from our past. I think that's always fascinating and interesting. Lady Jane, thank you, yes. Thank you, yeah. Um, yeah, so, but I'd like to try my hand at at every genre, I like I like mixing it up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Hi. Hi. What's your name? My name's Heather. Hello, Heather. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I was going to ask about psych, but you already took my question. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, given the opportunity and the right piece, would you go back and do stage work? Oh sure. Yeah. I love doing theatre. I haven't really gotten a chance to do much of it. Not as much as I'd like to, anyway. But, um, yeah, I'd love to. I'd love, if somebody asked me that today, um, I'd like to do, you know, some Tennessee William or Williams or Tom Stockwood or something like that. Yeah, I'd love to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Leanne. Hi, Leanne. Hi. My question for you is, yes. who or what was your greatest inspiration? Who is or what is my is my greatest inspiration? Was and was getting into acting. Oh, can I how, uh, can I say who is my greatest inspiration? Sure, yeah, whatever you. My greatest inspiration is my daughter. Yeah. Uh, she's seven years old and she inspires me every day, and she's very playful, and uh, I'm really good at Barbies now. <laughs> really, really good. Oh, you betcha. We got characters going on. It's like Downton Abbey up there. <laughs> so yeah, my wife thinks that's very cute that I play with dolls and and uh, dress up with her. I mean, sometimes she'll do my hair in the morning and uh, with with you know braids and stuff. It's crazy. I love her. Anyway, yeah, I'm very blessed. She's my greatest inspiration. Always, always will be. Yeah. Uh, first, I'd like to say, you know, in the years that have passed since Princess Bride, yes. I don't know how to do it, but you look like you've barely changed. Oh, so thank you. My question is actually, I'm also a huge Mel Brooks fan. Okay, and then cool. you had the honor to work with Mel Brooks, yes. you know, who is likely still with us. But do you have any funny stories? Is he as funny directing, or does he become the harder director? No, he's so fun on the set. He, he's, he's all about positive affirmation. His favorite word is yes. After everything, yes! yes. <laughs> Unless he doesn't like it, in which case it's <laughs> But for the most part, what I got was yes! Which was nice. To get positive, positive affirmation from the great Mel Brooks is always a nice thing. Um, he was just a delight. He was just, I think he just loves directing. He loves doing it. He's great at it. You know, he's fantastic with the crew and the cast, being an actor himself. I think actor directors really make the best directors. They really do. Because they, they get actors and they get it in ways that, that other directors might, you know, might have to pick up on their own without acting, you know? But uh, but he was just he's just a joy to work with. I would work with him, you know, in a heartbeat if I got the call tomorrow. And I just love him dearly. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Wow. 
You look great. What's your name? Deadpool. How cool is this guy? Let's give him a round of applause for Deadpool. He stands there, folded arms, and just takes it. You're very cool. Okay, Tadpole, lay it on again. Are we going to have a stare down? You're cooler than I am, man. Yeah. What was the funniest thing that happened on the set with your mom? The princess. Funniest thing? <laughs> it might have to have been Andre the Giant's 18 second fart. <laughs> Yeah, so if you want to know more, you know what to do. It was pretty magnificent. Let me just put it this way. Even the sound man had to lift his earphones. It could be heard in Detroit. It was monumental. There's at least four or five pages dedicated to what I, I refer to as the mighty wind. So yes, yes, that was probably the funniest moment in the whole world. Thank you for asking me that. You are the best. Thank you. That's how I hate you. Um, I was wondering if we could take a picture and then also, what was your favorite part um, to film during Robin Hood Men and Tights. Okay, uh, favorite moment in Robin Hood Men and Tights was, um, I guess, for me, the whole picture was fun to me, as I mentioned earlier, just it was a joy. I, I would show up early for work and, and leave late, you know. Sometimes I'd come on my day off and they'll go, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be home. I go, well, no, I just want to be here and, and enjoy it with you. It's okay, come and sit over here, come on. So I, I, it was just a joy for me every day. Probably my proudest moment was um, Mel comes up to me and he goes, okay, after lunch you're gonna have to shoot an arrow and hit this bullseye. I go, what? He goes, yeah, 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 you're gonna hit the bullseye. And this was before CGI, you know. And I'm thinking, you're kidding, right? He goes, you can do it, you can do it. He's the archer, I'm the archer guy, come over here, come over here. And the uh, archery uh, stunt double comes over and he goes, um, yeah, we're gonna hit the bullseye right after lunch. Don't worry about it, it's going to be fun. I'm thinking, I've never taken an archery lesson in my life. <laughs> Who are you kidding? So the pressure was on, you know? So all during lunch, I took a, you know, everybody went to eat. I had to practice with this guy all during lunch. I'm missing, I mean, like I'm hitting cats and trees and stuff. <laughs> this is crazy. And I'm sweating, I'm just sweating. And I'm looking at my watch and it's, Time is ticking away and people are starting to come back from lunch and go, this is, this is not gonna happen. I'm just gonna go for it. Not gonna happen. Mel comes up and goes, Yeah, you ready? We're gonna shoot this. You ready to get a bullseye? I go, Mel, well, I should. Hey, all right, let's get together. Let's get, this. Let's get the cameras rolling. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And so we line up the shot. First one I missed. Second one I missed. Third one, by total, complete, and utter disbelief on my face and not her chance, it hit the bullseye. And uh, that stood scene in the movie, and of course I stood there like, piece of kid. <laughs> but I, you know, we could have been there all day, you know? But uh, thank goodness uh, I had this great guy who helped me, helped me learn during lunch, and thank goodness we got one, and I couldn't believe it. Anyway, let's take pictures. <laughs>
Hello. Over here? Oh, we're coming way over here. Way over there. Hi. Hi. I have a question. What's your name? Jen. Hi, Jen. All right. You're good at playing heroes, but you like playing villains as much like you did in Kiss the Girls. Ha ha! Yes. Kiss the Girls. Actually, I was in my hotel room two nights ago and it was on because I couldn't sleep and I was watching TNT and it came on. I don't normally watch my own work. <laughs> But it was midnight and I was trying to fall asleep. I thought, well, I'll watch my own performance then, probably. <laughs> I'll probably do it, you know? Um, but I was actually kind of blown away by how the film still holds up. And, uh, you know, again, I have to say, I'm so blessed to get to work with these talented people. I and mean, here I am working with Morgan Freeman, you know? Um, yeah, and for the second time, you know, what are the chances of that? You know, we'd done Glory together, and here I was making this picture with him. And, and he was just magnificent. He and Ashley, the whole cast were incredible. Him, Ashley Judd, Tony Goldwyn. Um, I mean, we just had a, an incredible time making it. was very, it was a, the first real dark role I, I had. And, uh, and Gary Fleeter, the director, just gave me free reign to do, you know, just encouraged me to go further with it all the time. And so I just, it was a real joy for me uh, to get to do a big movie like that with these wonderful, talented people. And yeah, it's always, I guess, I don't know why it is that the Brits get to play more villains than Americans. Why is that? I guess it's our accent. It's the accent it is. Okay. I don't know why. Huh? Revolutionary War. Revolutionary War. Okay. Are we go there? I always say I'm British by birth, but American by choice. Does that answer your question? Did I? Did I mention yeah, my question? Yeah, you answered my question. Ted. <laughs> Sorry? Could I have a hug too? Of course. There's Somebody mentioned those three words to me. I was in a restaurant, <laughs> and I think I was ordering, I don't know, a hamburger or a turkey burger or something. And the waitress went, how do you want that done? I went, medium rare. She goes, as you would. <laughs> and I looked at her and went, what? She goes, you know. <laughs> and so it was kind of wonderful and weird at the same time, because I've never had anyone quote lines to me before from my book, you know? And, uh, and it was a beautiful thing because the film, when it opened, really didn't, it wasn't a big success. Because um, they didn't, the studio didn't, didn't know how to sell it. They didn't know, was it a fantasy? Was it a kid's movie? Was it a girly movie? Because it's a princess in the title. Um, or was it a comedy? They didn't know how to sell it. So the movie actually didn't even have a trailer when it came out, uh, if you can believe that. They had one, I think, and then they pulled it. And so the movie came and went, disappeared, and so it was kind of mostly dead you know, for a while. 
until this beautiful thing of blanket. That's also in my book. As you wish, available October 14. Um, and then this this new medium called VHS came about, and you have it on VHS. Thank you. Yeah, I, it's amazing. People still have their VH, VHS copies. They come up to me and they're like, you know, you realize we broke this. We <laughs> watched it so many times, it's broken. <laughs> but will you sign it? Yeah. It's, it's, great. it's really great. I can't believe it. So people started renting it and then sharing it with friends and then giving it as gifts at holidays and then buying it themselves for the library. And then suddenly this, this mostly dead film had a rebirth. And that's when I started getting people quoting lines to me. So, yeah, it was, it was very sweet, very nice, yeah. Nice surprise. Well, that's good, but I definitely will tell her that she'll be very excited. Tell her for me, I'm very impressed. And I hope one day we get a quote, of, quote off together. Oh, okay. she'll, she'll be ready. She'll probably be better than I am. <laughs> So I, I, the quality time that I have with my daughter is that I don't, I, I, I take that very seriously. I know, it sounds weird, no, I take, take, take playing with Barbie seriously, I do. I do. Ken is no longer named Ken, he's, he's I think his name is Trevor. Um, he's got a whole history, of, you know, he's got a family and kids and all things, it's amazing. Yeah, so I, I try to encourage her her um, imagination. At the same time, she helps me encourage mine, you know? Yeah. Thank you. It is a good thing. I have another question. Yes. Okay, can I have a hug from you? Of course. <laughs> Funnier 
<laughs> that's what they wanted to say. We really want this to be funnier. If you can make it funnier, that'd be great. So we sat down, I sat down with the writer, and we kind of worked on it together, which was, which was a new experience for me. So that was kind of fun. Um, voiceover work, I, you know, it's, it's fun. As you can tell, I like doing voices. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm, I'm quite fortunate that I have that career as well. Um, I did Cosmos recently. I played Sir Edmund Halley. Yeah, that's right. That's a good show. That's a good show. And uh, I've done Family Guy. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate. It's fun to do. Yeah. It's very easy. You can show up to work and you don't have to, like, shave or anything. It's great. Yeah, you can just come in and do that and you're good to go. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hi, what's your name? I'm Kayla. Hello, Kayla. How are you? Good. Uh, <laughs> did you enjoy getting pushed down a giant hill? <laughs> <laughs> you, mean, you mean the Princess Bride went and rolled down the hill? Yeah. That wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. After I broke my toe, you think they're going to let me roll down a hill? <laughs> are you kidding? Are you kidding? Um, no, that was our wonderful Andy Bradford, my stunt double, and, uh, and Robin's stunt double as well, rolling down the hill. And uh, I remember we had, I think they had to do it twice because they realized that his mask has to come off because at the end of the hill, and so I'm like, Wesley again, but anyway. So God bless them. They were very brave and did that, that roll down the hill. And we just came in and looped the lines later where I say, you know, those three words, you know. <laughs> and, uh, what words? <laughs> That's right, those words. And yeah, so it was, um, luckily, I, I was not injured again in that particular stunt. Although, if you read the book, did I mention the book? <laughs> if you read the book, you'll find out that yes, yes, I did get injured one more time on the film, being the klutz that I am. So, uh, but it, actually that one wasn't my fault. Uh, somebody hit me with a sword. Oh my God. But you have to read it to find out. I know. We're gonna save some, right? I would ask for a hug, but she said no more hugs. Oh.
Excuse me, dead boy. What is that? Thank you. God bless.